My name is Tahir Hemphill. I'm a creative technologist and educator. My practice investigates the role systems play in the generation of form and the role that knowledge production plays in the resilience of communities. Uh, in the future that I'm imagining, the singularity exists, uh, which is both exciting and problematic because the singularity is also a colonizing process. Hello, my name is Kim Madrines. I am the Chief Scientific Officer of the Los Angeles Biomedical Research Institute at Harvard UCLA. My research is in human immunology and the microbiome. I think that uh, in the near future is going to bring us uh, personalized medicine, what we call precision medicine. The right medicine for the right person at the right time, all of the time. However, beyond that, wouldn't it be great if we could actually integrate all these uh, knowledge on the cellular and molecular basis of life uh, to resolve much more complex problems that span from the individual to society? Can you imagine resolving problems such as what is consciousness, what makes us happy, what makes us feel fulfilled in our lives? I hope that you and I will be able to witness that knowledge coming in our lifetime. Hi, I'm Maya Matarik. I'm a professor of computer science, neuroscience, and pediatrics at the University of Southern California. And my work has been on socially assistive robots, machines that can help people have someone to tell stories with. So we're natural storytellers as people, and we need someone and many others to tell stories with. And sometimes, for various reasons, people don't have that someone to tell stories with. So a robot, a personal robot, can help with that. Well, there's no one else there, then the robot can be there to tell those personal stories and to grow with. Hi, I'm Zach McKinney, and I'm the Chief Science Officer for Spinal Singularity. My expertise and passion is in the field of human rehabilitation and augmentation. And uh, when I look at the future, I see a range of possibilities, um, all rich with capabilities, challenges, and opportunities. Uh, on, on the capabilities side, I see that we have a rapidly expanding field of knowledge, uh, rich with both sensors and devices that enable us to become our best selves in terms of uh, the information that we can acquire and the way we can use it and also our physical capabilities. Um, but with any powerful technology comes the, the opportunity to, uh, to abuse it and, and for it to be leveraged against us in ways that we might not even appreciate or understand. So uh, I think it's really important at, at every juncture that we really evaluate how we're using the technologies that we spawn and uh, be aware of whether they are creating the results that we want. And uh, I'm, you know, as a technologist, I'm ever, ever an optimist and I have full confidence in our ability to do so, but uh, I think it's incumbent on each of us at every moment to ask ourselves the question of, is this making my life better and, uh, and how can I really embody the, uh, the self and the future that I want to build? Hi, my name is Olivia Rosborn. I work at CNSI at UCLA and I'm a nanotoxicologist. I think the future of science will have to require the three C's, communication, curiosity, and cross-interdisciplinary research. I'm excited about nanotechnology because it's very small but can cause very big impact. I'm specifically excited because it can range anything from water filtration to therapeutics. I'm Phil Ross and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Microworks. Uh, we're a company that is growing fungal mycelium to make uh, analogs for leather and vinyl and all sorts of other materials that are currently made out of plastic. Um, the thing that I see in the world that we're going into is we'll probably have uh, companion organisms living on us, you know, very close to us, uh, initially as fungus and bacteria. And uh, I think that that's going to open up a very interesting world as, um, you know, our, our world directly around us is alive. My name is Alex Young and I'm the Associate Director for Science in the Heliophysics Science Division at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. And I study the activity of our star and other stars beyond our solar system, ultimately to understand the environment that they create as the sun or another star releases billions of tons of material, vast amounts of energy throughout the solar system, interacting with planets, asteroids, and in particular, interacting with the Earth. So one day, 
we're hoping to be able to predict what we call space weather, much like we do now with terrestrial weather. And while we learn to eventually mitigate the, the impact it can have on our technology, perhaps we can even control and use the energy that the sun is pumping into our environment. Because as we become more and more technologically sophisticated and advanced, we actually become more and more susceptible and vulnerable to all the things that the sun is throwing our way.